Hey, everybody, this is David Skarika. I hope you're all doing well. So um, I, I want to apologize for not having as many stock charts uh, of the day this week. So I'm going to do kind of a more in-depth one. We're going to talk about short-term market action and precious metals to make up for the fact. Um, one thing I haven't really talked about, um, um, unfortunately, uh, my mom got diagnosed with cancer. So everyone pray for my mom. They gir they're giving her about a 60% chance. So she's starting chemo this week. So, you know, I spent a little more time, you know, talking with my mom on the phone and that sort of thing. And then I had, I got a new consulting deal this week. I'm still doing some edits on my book. I, I write for something called, you know, I'm going to show you, um, yeah, because if you really like my work, it's only $110 a year. I really don't make any money off it other than the fact that they pay me for the articles. But it's something called Financial Intelligence Report that uh, Newsmax. Um, and you actually even see the head. You know, the, I'll show you the newsletter they have is actually I'm the head uh, um, writer on it. And one of the other writers on it told me I was like the last few years have been the most kind of like accurate writer there. So, you know, I don't write much for the, this newsletter now. This is kind of more media orientated. Um, actually, really don't even like to write to be honest with you like it's a pain in the butt i remember Hunt, i was a huge hunter s thompson fan and he said something to that degree so um anyhow if you're interested though i, I write i write for them on a monthly basis usually a 1400 to 2000 word article um i've had some excellent articles recently on uranium you know we've talked about the cannabis stocks um how to short you know the tech stocks versus these ver uh, via these in, uh, individual etfs so you know and again, if you like my work, you know, I think financial intelligence, you know, there's a lot of other really good writers on their report as well. So I think you'll enjoy it. So I'll show you that right now. And if you're someone who still likes the written word over these videos, there you go. So here it is here. It's only $109. So basically $9 a month, roughly. So, um, and there's 12 uh, um, a year. And um, yeah, Jim Rickards, Robert Wiedermeyer. Robert's a really nice guy. I've met him in person and obviously I'm there as well. So, um, um, so if you, if you enjoy again, what I do, et cetera, et cetera, I'm hoping that when my book is published through Newsmax, that Newsmax will pick up another, uh, uh, pay uh, another newsletter, um, on behalf would be a lot different than what I do here, but, um, and, you know, and it would probably be that same range, you know, that kind of $110 a year kind of range. So anyhow, that, that that's enough for that. So, what I'm going to look at today is two things. Um, we're going to look at the short-term action in the markets, which I think we might have gotten this kind of relief rally on the start of the conflict or war or whatever you want to call it in Gaza. Um, um, and then maybe the market now resumes downwards. Now, look, I'm still of the of the opinion that, you know, in 2018, the market actually topped in October and fell into the end of the year. And um, in, in like 2000, the market fell all fourth quarter. But I'm still of the opinion that the majority of the decline, if it's going to happen, is still going to have to happen these last roughly two weeks of October. And I will definitely be lightening up. Part of the reason is, too, I don't really want to trade it because I do think I'm going to show you in gold and precious metals. This war has also kind of started, the has been the catalyst now that we're in the seasonal strong part for precious metals. Plus, you know, now we have this geopolitical event. I think it started where precious metals can can rally. And I'm not really interested in like, you know, I guess they say selling the rips and buying the dips in the market or just selling the rips if I'm short. I, I you know, I'll keep a short position uh, after October will be much smaller than what I have now. But again, you look at the Dow here, the Dow bounced back to the 200 day moving average. And this kind of, you know, was up a lot midday and kind of reverse. So you can see here the last three or four trading days were kind of running into resistance here. The S and P looks exactly the same way. Now the S and P bounced off the two, uh, the 200 day. Now the question is, do we kind of move lower through it? You know? So, and again, again I, I know I drew these downtrend lines in the last update. Uh, actually I did it for that. That was for paying Patreon members. But again, I would say the S and P goes through about 4450. So that's a hundred points higher than year roughly. Um, that's when you see, um, you know, maybe the, the start, same with the NASDAQ, you can see a defined downtrend here turn lower NASDAQ is pretty is very much uh, above its 200 day so maybe we pull back towards that etc cetera, etc cetera. obviously we're going to start having big tech stock earnings we had some bank earnings they all kind of reversed you can see the big gap up because they had strong earnings at JP Morgan but they've also announced and I think this is the reason they reversed they also announced that um they have these huge losses which I've been talking about because remember they all own corporate bonds they all own treasuries and like if you go look at like the quick TLT here. I'm going to talk this more um, in in my for my paid Patreon members. We'll talk about this more in detail. But yeah, if you own treasuries, remember a crap load of treasuries were issued in 2020, 2021 when they were spending all that money during COVID. 
and you're you know, you'd be buying between roughly say 130 and 160. So let's say you're in the middle there, you're at 140, 145. You know, you're you're down 30 to 40 percent. And you know, these 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 they own you know hundreds of billions of that trillions of these things, all the banks. So that is really gonna hurt their balance sheets. And they don't have to mark to market anymore, so they haven't realized these losses. And then it, this is the same thing, which I'll show in my Patreon members update. The same thing for um for corporate bonds and the whatnot. So, you know, so it just looks like to me, like you know, um, um, and I have an ETF I've I've talked about again, for my paid members uh, as a way to kind of if we are going to see weakness in the financials, a way to kind of play that. Okay, so um, and yeah, so then let's look at gold and precious metals here. And you can see this looks like it's really interesting. Gold is not so much the daily chart, but the weekly chart. Um, and uh, we're, we're gonna, I'm going to get the weekly chart here. It looks like a massive reversal on the weekly chart. You can see this this last kind of week or two of September, last week of September, which was really weak, has now kind of been all taken away. And we're kind of in this downtrend here. And again, we look at the seasonal pattern, which I've talked about in the past. You can see this little consolidation here in 2019, and then gold moved all the way up into the summer of next year. And then you can see, you know, um, after that, you know, the that, then again, that October period here, gold rallied into the spring of 2022. Then last year in 2022, you know, here, boom. So the question is, what kind of rally are we going to see? You know, we saw extremely strong rally, you know, in the 2019 to 2020 seasonal strong period. We saw pretty, you know, a weak rally in 2021, 2022. And last year we saw a pretty good size rally. It was, it was better than the rally in 21, 2022. But again, it kind of it, it petered out at the highs. Now we're coming from a much higher level, and we're you know we're getting close to two thousand dollar gold already. So the question is on the seasonal strength right now, which usually begins in October and November and goes into the following spring to summer. Will we finally do that breakout? And now we have such a divine defined resistance at that twenty one hundred. Um, sorry about that. Sometimes I hit caps a lot. Especially when you have a mic now, have a, you know, because I have this mic in front of me. And yeah, you can see, I just think that when gold breaks, it will break huge. Again, if we get a longer term chart on gold, we'll see that back. You know, it's kind of reminding me of this kind of 2014, 2018 period. Okay, that's over four years, actually five years to break. So the question is, will this take another two years? I don't think so. But you can see gold had this resistance at 1400. And boom, when it broke to 1400, you know, basically went 50% above the former resistance level. And if you take the bottom here of 1200, that was about a 67% move. So if you take, again, roughly 50% and 60, you know, so, um, and a 60, 70% move, we're talking 3000 gold potentially on this next breakout. And if you kind of look at from the bottom here, top here is roughly a two year move. So again, maybe this will be a two year move that takes us into 2025, which kind of makes sense because I think the Fed will cut rates next year and the whatnot. So again, if we go kind of look at silver, silver is the same way. We did it again. Um, silver is the same way. And you can see that silver's resistance is kind of higher, but silver again kind of looks like it's bottomed here. And uh, and the whatnot. And, you know, again, because it trades with gold, you can kind of see the same seasonal trading pattern. Silver got whacked. That, that was just because of the financial crisis. Really, the rally started here or after this consolidation and, and lasted here. You know, same thing, 21, 22, et cetera, et cetera. And the thing about silver is because it's kind of more coiled. It's kind of more in this basing. You can see here, really, if it breaks that kind of $30 level, there's not much resistance to like, I guess 35 would be the next, these kind of bear market rallies that happened in 2012. But after that, really, you're talking going back to the highs in silver probably over the next two years. And probably what would happen is kind of like gold seeing now at 2100, say, let's say gold hits that 3000. That's probably when silver would hit 50. And then silver would probably have some resistance up there. I would not expect a huge decline like this. I would expect it to be more like the gold consolidation of the last few years. And again, if we go look at, um, um, let you know, uh, if we go look at the gold stocks now, they've kind of woken up here. The GDX, let's get a shorter term chart to see this. And you can see this here again, similar to the gold stocks, this weekly reversal here. Like, even if I'm sure we'll see it, even, you know, let's see that on a monthly chart as well. Yeah, you can see the same thing on monthly. Like, if, if the GDX hits above 30, and I'll show the uh, uh, uh the, the GLD in a second. That kind of takes out, you know, September was a terrible month. But that kind of reverses that month. 
And we could probably at very least go to this, the highs earlier this year. We go to the GLD. Yeah. So, and then again, if we, same thing, you can see the GLD is actually just a few dollars away from hmm, kind of reversing that September decline. This is the TLT. You now, bonds, you know, they could be bonding in here short term. You could get the flight to safety into bonds due to the war. I think the, the uncertainty the war is going to cause may stop the Fed from raising rates. So, like, that could also help as well. So, we're going to look at how many times can I hit four instead of the dollar sign? Um, so, you can see the, the rates have started, I think, to... You can see they were steadily have been going up, 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 up on a monthly chart. This is what great about sometimes about these monthly charts. Here, you can see them going up here, and you can see it starting to flatten out. And again, if we go look, I've shown you these long-term charts in the in the past, but let's look at it. This is a more detailed stock chart of the day because we did not have one for a few days. And you can kind of see, again, it's looking like that 05, 06 period. And by the way, 05, 06 was into 07 was a great time for gold and gold stocks. Actually, let's get the HUI up just so you can see it. You know, yeah, you can see like, you know, the 05 when they when they stopped raising rates into like, you know, really into 08, how great this was for gold stocks. You know, gold stocks, the HOI went from basically 150 to almost 500, even after this 06 consolidation was over. Because I remember I had a couple deals. That was probably the best junior market I've seen since the 90s junior market with Briax. Like this one year I made, that was kind of how I got made my money to move to the Bahamas was, was basically that, that I had a couple deals do uh, uh, fantastically. I was going to move anyhow, but it made my move a lot more comfortable to say the least. You know, so anyhow, I remember a deal I bought in 06, the first year I was officially a non-resident and it moved to the Bahamas did, you know, really well. So um, it was great. You know, it was great. So anyhow, I'm hoping for that kind of market again. So, um, um, anyhow, but anyhow, it just looks like to me again, we look like we're kind of topping out in rates here. Now, that that was a long top out period, and if we kind of go back, I'm gonna go back all the way to 1998, so we can see the 2000. The actually, I'll, I'll go back even longer because that's the problem with stock charts. You get the uh, thing there. You can kind of see 2000, and same thing in 94, 95. Rates actually didn't go sideways for that long. It was just a few months. So maybe we're more in that kind of scenario too. So I am expecting that we are in a new secular high, but yeah, I think that two and a half, three percent 3% or so, I think that's a good target for the next low in the Fed funds rate. And just for decades, we went to lower highs in interest rates. Now I think we'll go to higher highs and see that. So anyway, I thought I'd leave you on that. I'll leave you on that. It does look like Short term, let's watch the markets. It does look like unless these tech stocks really start blowing earnings away, Microsoft had, a, had an issue with it with an accounting uh, error. They had to place twenty nine billion in extra taxes now. Uh, and we look at Amazon's looking actually pretty weak. <clears throat> we see the yeah, they're all down pretty good. Nvidia has been the one that's been the strongest, but it could be in a potential topping pattern. With um with my short on Nvidia, um I'm kind of putting a stop at like you know five hundred. So I'd like that trade here. Like to me, it's 10% downside with, you know, if the video goes back to 300, it's 30% upside with like 10% downside. I always like those kind of trades, right? So um, anyhow, um, um, I'll leave it at that. So like, yeah, so it does look like the market could, let, let's see if this was a short term, just bounce and then and the whatnot, et cetera. And we're seeing again, like these things that should be rallying on tensions in the Middle East, like for whatever reason, they sold off, like oil sold off hard or didn't move. And now finally later in the week, gold, the whatnot, oil all moved. Like remember gold's move. I cannot believe I can keep doing that. Uh, but gold's move. Uh, here, you can see, look at this, you know, that, that's the biggest move in a long time that, you know, and actually it's way bigger than any down day we've had in golden years. Uh, you can't really see it. Let's, let's get like a one year chart. I think actually there was a similar move late last year. If we go look at it. Yeah. Go look at right here in November of 2022. These there was like these huge up days, and that kind of launched the entire rally into the next spring. So if we see a couple more of these up days, and again, go go look at this downtrend here. We're almost right at it. Like really a break between above 1950 will do it, and then really a break above 1975 would be short term resistance. And then of course 2000, then do the 2050 to 20 2100s the major resistance. So um, so it looks like to me like again we're kind of similar to where we were in November of last year. 
that was coming off like 1600. That was a pretty good size rally. You know, gold rallied almost $500 from six or $450. So rallied 25, 27%, you know, that sort of thing. So anyhow, um, um, yeah, so is that kind of thing going to happen? It does. I just think these geopolitical tensions, maybe the potential of bonds seeing a, a, a short term bottom here could all uh, uh, play into that. So anyhow, uh, for Patreon members and pay and lifetime members, we will have a. am going to talk about a few gold and precious metal stuff. Ended up working out perfectly because this weekend I wanted to talk about a few juniors I like, a few precious metal stocks I like. And then sometimes things just fall into line, right? Because we get this huge gold rally on Friday. And this was going to be more like, oh, these are stocks you should look at longer term. Well, now maybe with this rally potentially starting from here, we can, you know, we can move higher, you know. So everybody take care. And I hope you enjoyed this video.